And there we go. The meeting is now being recorded. Um, we have the slides and then Bruce Neville from Brazos Valley is going to um, take notes for us today. Again, thank you so much, Bruce. We appreciate it. All right, Michelle, you ready? Yeah, let's go. Okay. All right, so we've got quite a bit to cover today in the agenda. Um, we'll cover the meeting format once again, if you weren't able to join us uh, in December as a new president, just so that you're familiar with what we're planning to do with these meeting times um, over the next 12 months. Uh, we'll cover a little bit of 2021 in review and then spend a lot of time talking about um, what we have planned for uh, 2021. We'll talk about what we have planned for 2022 for the bulk of the meeting. Um, and then the resources that are available or that are in use uh, throughout the state. Okay, so if you are new here and you're on video, will you raise your hand? Any of our new chapter presidents? Awesome. Welcome. And many of you put in the chat when you introduce yourselves, whether you were new or returning president, thank you for doing that. If you haven't done that already, um, Go ahead again and introduce yourself in the chat um, if you haven't done it yet and let us know if you're um, a new president this year or returning. It's great to see so many new faces and returning faces as well. Um, so with our, our chapter presidents and advisors monthly meeting, um, my the plan is to continue to pull that contact list from the TMN directors list. If you have not updated your contact in there, and you got uh, the invite for today's meeting via the past president. Um, if you will please make sure that you are on the directors list as the chapter president so that we can pull your direct email address for the invites from now on. Um, these meetings are normally one hour long. If we have a large agenda, we typically try to tell you in advance that, hey, this may run past that hour mark. Um, but if you do need to leave right at the one o'clock mark, don't don't worry, we are recording the, these meetings so that you have a, a way to go back and watch that recording as well. Um, I'll share this link. This is It's gonna be the same link for every month of this year, um, what you used to get in today. So you can just copy and paste that on your calendar um, for the next 12 months, um, minus the two TMN Tuesday ones. And we'll talk about those in just a second. Um, but that same link, I'll resend it back out uh, about a week to two weeks in advance each time, just to remind you with our tentative agenda of what we're planning um, and a request for any uh, additional uh, discussion topics that might be needed. Um, notes, chats, and slides will always be posted, and slides will always be posted to the state website afterwards so that you have access to those. And then any sort of follow up items that I mentioned during the meeting hey, I owe you guys this, or I'm gonna send you this announcement. I'll send it in a follow-up email, um, usually within a couple of hours afterwards, if not by the end of the day. Um, also, if you are new here, um, you can count attending today's meeting and all of the uh, subsequent meetings as chapter slash program administration for that one hour, or if it goes over um, worth of volunteer service. So it's a great and easy way for y'all is um, chapter administrators to earn some volunteer service hours as well. All right. Um, also, I do tend to talk a little fast. So if y'all need me to slow down um, or if you have questions on something, drop it in chat. Michelle will, um, will stop me or I'll stop her and we'll cover that topic again. So don't, don't, don't worry about uh, trying to interrupt us in the chat with questions. Our 2022 president's meetings are scheduled out over the next 12 months. We did try to stick to somewhat of a schedule towards the end of the month because um, that helps us to cover all the things that, that are coming up in the next month. The summers get a little weird as Michelle and I both take a few weeks off during the summer. Um, and then we've got some joint TMN Tuesday meetings, which is different this year. So that July 12th and December 13th are an opportunity for us to have a joint TMN Tuesday and president's meeting. Um, our goal with that is to host those as uh, chapter leadership development, management uh, training. Um, we're still seeking topics on, um, on chapter management issues of need that we can cover with that TMN Tuesday type advanced training, but also still covering some of the state initiatives that, uh, that you as chapter presidents need to hear about as well. Um, so we're excited to kind of 
combine those two uh, in July and December. So there will only be one TMN Tuesday and President's meeting all at the same time those days. Um, recorded and posted to the website by uh, close of business the following day. Okay. All right, so our first topic today is to talk about uh, leadership transition. Uh, we kind of covered this a little bit during the last meeting and Michelle asked this question, um, if those chapters that had a board retreat would answer in the chat um, and have you, has your chapter had its board retreat yet? And then Michelle, you had some more questions for some of our incoming leaders too. Yeah, so today we wanted to talk, we wanted to ask you this question. Um, if your board has held a um, retreat for the 2022 year um, already in January, since we're at the end of January already, um, and if, uh, if you have, could you um, share with us in the chat what your chapter goals are for 2022? And then if you, as a president, if you haven't had a board retreat yet, what are your um, what are you thinking about as the, the leader of your chapter, um, the president of your chapter, as far as goals? Um, go ahead and drop those in the chat and we'll give you just a few seconds to do that. Looks like some topics include uh, budget and training. <clears throat> Five-year plan. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, that absolutely counts to set goals. That's exactly what a board retreat, that's perfect. Increasing outreach as COVID de declines, it's a great goal. Retaining interns, succession planning, increasing volunteer activities, great stuff. Great. Well, we're excited to see some of these um, come to fruition for y'all as well. Okay. Go ahead and keep dropping those in the chat if um, if you still if they're still coming to mind or you're still uh, working to find the chat. <laughs> um, but we're going to move on, and um, but we will capture that information in the chat. <clears throat> Michelle, you want to give us a 2021 review? So in 2021, um, we had, we're just giving you a quick review of what um, the program did and accomplished in 2021. Um, we set out in the new year to um, really um, have more communication methods and increase our, our communication from the program level to our chapters and then um, vice versa. And one of the ways that we did that is by continuing these meetings here, which we will continue in perpetuity um, with our chapter presidents and advisors and uh, chapter presidents. And just remember that advi your advisors are invited to attend these meetings as well. Um, so if you have new advisors for the year, uh, please be sure to uh, update that information in the VMS too, along with your um, officers and committee chairs. Uh, last year, we also we launched our TMN Tuesdays events, which we are keeping um, again this year. Um, and we had a large um, update of our website and events calendar. Uh, the largest uh, up update was through the, the website itself. And then we also did information, uh, more information we pushed through social media and utilized those avenues more to communicate with not only our members, but the public as well. We launched um, into hybrid meetings last year. Um, so last year was a little bit of a transition year where we moved from completely virtual um, options of everything um, to, which was in 2020, and then to some hybrid options with meeting um, some people in person while also simultaneously having uh, online meetings uh, as COVID restrictions allowed. And with that, we brought new training modules. Um, we provided uh, how-to hybrid training um, and some resources for your chapters to be able to do that. And we did, we kind of modeled that process too through our 
the statewide offerings and advanced training offerings in our virtual and volunteer fairs that we've been providing the program statewide. Um, virtual volunteer fairs is something that we started in 2020, in the fall of 2020, backed by popular demand in 2021, where we held two of them. And then uh, again, by popular demand, your members and our chapters have asked for another one in 2022, and we'll talk about that in a minute. We had more uh, state-sponsored advanced training, again, through our TMN Tuesdays and some other ad hoc uh, uh, statewide advanced trainings that we did, but also uh, through our state uh, annual meeting that we've had hybrid as well. Last year, we updated our chapter management and operations protocols, which has, was a three-year process that all chapters were involved in and had an opportunity to um, provide feedback on. And uh, that is the, the CMOP is the chapter management and operations protocol that we're operating under today. Uh, it is placed on our website. And Mary Pearl, if you get a chance to drop the link there um, on the CMOP. Some lessons learned in 2021. Um, oh, you're doing it live. <laughs> um, lessons learned in 2021 is that we needed to remain flexible. And um, it's looking like 2022 is the same. Uh, remain flexible in uh, training, um, meeting in person or not, or providing hybrid options for everyone. Um, we learned that we needed to identify new communication methods to be more efficient. And then um, we also, in 2021, we launched our Be the Change series, um, working with where we delved into the topic of increasing diversity, equity, and inclusion and um, being more diverse, equitable, and inclusive um, throughout the program statewide. Okay, next slide. Okay, yep. Um, 2021, we announced at the very tail end of last year that we will be offering, we are offering the grit and distance pin for 2021. So, um, this, again, this pin will, uh, because of all some of the restrictions and, and uh, various uh, movement from in-person back to virtual and, and various uh, social distance reg regulations, um, again, in 2020, we are offering the grit, through the grit and distance pin. Um, this pin will recognize any member who has reported at least um, eight hours of advanced training and at least one hour of volunteer service in the VMS. Um, and so your, that would be for the calendar year last year um, and your members still have the, we still have that 45 day window period that we're working with um, from December 31st to get that information entered um, and approved in our VMS system. So uh, a note to your members, if they have service they need to get reported um, for December, like we need to get that in there as soon as possible. We will begin pulling the reports in February, uh, around February or around February 15th is the 45 day cutoff for December 31st reporting day. Um, I'll be pulling the reports and then compiling the list of members by chapter and then the number of pins um, for the members who have reached that, those criteria and then sending the packages to your chapters. Michelle, there's a question um, relative to the last slide about the um, uh, CMOP and the update of the three documents. Will you talk about the update plan for this year as well? Yep. Um, so the next um, document that we're working on currently right now is the chapter operating handbook template. And so we, um, again, same process. We've taken the feedback that you've your chapters have given over the past three years and are working to update the chapter operating handbook template. Um, hopefully it, this spring, it'll be completed. Thank you. Okay, so looking into 2020, um, some planning and then some dates uh, to add to your calendar. Um, but first, Michelle, before you mute yourself, can you tell us a little bit more about the lightning welt? Yes, in October at our annual meeting, as we always announce um, at our annual meeting, 
was the so the 2022 um, recertification pin for this year uh, is the lightning whelk, which is our state shell of Texas. Um, I won't go into too much detail about the lightning whelk and its life history. Um, we did a little bit of that in our TMN Tuesday earlier this month, and so that's on the recording there. Um, but again, this is the recertification pin for 2022. It recognizes that when a member um, recertifies in the year, so 40 hours of service in eight hours of advanced training, um, these are to be given to our members when they reach those, those uh, criteria within this calendar year. Um, as a just a standard, our for 2022, our program is still operating under the same same COVID guidelines that we've had since uh, May of 2021, um, and these are presented on our COVID-19 response page. And the I'm gonna mute Robert. Um, the Robert, I believe you've got an issue with your audio. Um, the uh, the guidelines are to um, to encourage the use of virtual and hybrid tools uh, as an important consideration for planning meetings and events. And then for any outdoor or indoor activities that do occur in person, um, please encourage and consider uh, health and safety protocols of your local city, county um, governments as well. Um, so again, those are all on our website. And, um, and Michelle can drop that link in the chat here in just a second. Um, some other, uh, this was actually your slide to talk about, Michelle, if you wanted to cover this one, I'll grab that COVID-19 page. Okay. Um, so what we're, <laughs> the um, 2022 certification over the past two years uh, and now moving into three years uh, since the pandemic started, we have an interim policy for earning certification, um, more, more likely, more realistically for basic training and advanced training. So earning certification in 2022 has not changed. Um, our requirements are still 40 hours of service, um, 40 hours of training, and eight hours of advanced training to earn your certification. Um, so that isn't cha changing. Um, what we hope you do as a chapter is that you remain flexible um, with your solutions on how that get, gets done, uh, whether that means staying fluid and moving from uh, in-person trainings to um, hybrid or um, all virtual, depending on what the COVID um, policies and regulations are within your local community. Um, and we anticipate that our chapters will probably have to move in and out of um, various regulations or safety protocols um, to meet that, um, especially here in the, the first half of the first quarter of the year. Um, our basic training our basic training temporary policy is that uh, you our members can uh, receive training all online uh, where needed, and uh, we do require that uh, a a presentation is or a video if it's watched, be followed up with live Q&A um, by the same speakers. Again, we, we, we will allow for all 40 hours, all 40 of the planned um, basic training hours to be done in this manner if it needs to be. Um, we encourage us to be used minimally and only as needed. And we also encourage our chapters to work together in this effort. Um, you're all doing the same thing in your respective areas and where you can um, collaborate and work together. It makes things easier on um, everybody in your local communities and your local chapters. The advanced training policy, we have a temporary policy there too. Um, previously, we only allowed for half of the hours, half of the advanced training hours to be obtained via webinars um, or online training. And this, uh, the interim policy allows for all of the advanced training to be um, uh, obtained in that manner, um, again, with live Q&A and follow-up. And then the volunteer service requirements are not changing for 2022. So we still require 40 hours of service and eight hours of advanced training annually. Great. 
Um, and then there are also some um, statewide offerings that that are part of that temporary policy. These are all on that uh, page that um, that I put dropped the link to in the chat. Um, for the 2021 annual meeting, those recordings can still be watched through April of 22 for AT hours in 2022, calendar year 2022. Those That state offering is being made available six months post event because of the virtual platform that hosted that event, that event's capability. I have heard that that website has had some issues this week. So what we're doing is we, because it, it automatically goes to a, an archive format and it makes it harder for our attendees to log in. Um, so what we're doing is we are actively trying to very quickly download all of those recordings from the annual meeting host website and put them into a, a, a recording format so that our um, attendees from the 2021 annual meeting can watch those. Um, so I was hoping to have that project done by the end of this week. If not, it'll be early next week. And that will be a follow-up email that I'll send to all chapter presidents to let them know about that. Our and team and two to be clear on the um, annual meeting, 2021 annual meeting, that's for those who registered. Um, yes. The people who have access to the annual meeting are the registrants that um, registered to, to attend or be a hybrid um, registrant of the annual meeting. Yep, thank you. We'll send those recordings, um, the links to those recordings directly to those registrants. Um, TMN Tuesdays and Be the Change have been part of our state offer, office offerings exception for the training hours. So those TMN Tuesdays recorded sessions can be watched for 80 hours within the calendar year that they are offered. So 2021 TMN Tuesdays cannot be watched for 80 hours in 2022. Um, if your members are looking for watching those 2021 TMN Tuesdays, they can for their own education or information. But if they're looking to count advanced training hours, they have to watch the 2022 calendar year TMN Tuesdays. Okay. Are we good, Michelle? Okay. Speaking of TMN Tuesdays, um, Michelle came to me with this idea in late 2020, early 2021, and said, hey, we should do this once a month, and we should keep it flexible, and that drove me nuts because I like to plan things out six months in advance, um, but it was, it was an incredible way for us to offer advanced trainings in a very on-demand uh, conservation issues of the month kind of way that we could, by keeping it so flexible, we could assess the, the need within the state of a topic that was aligning with those issues that everybody was talking about um, already. So this was our list of, of 2021 TMN Tuesdays. Um, and you could see we were able to put, that, put together that winter storm Yuri within a few months after that event. We were able to put the um, watershed protection planning uh, workshop together quickly to be uh, on time with those programs. We could put the uh, BATS program with white nose syndrome in, in place when that research and that information was coming out. So again, keeping them flexible while frustrating as a planner um, allows us to keep flexible to the conservation issues of, of highest need during that season of the year. Um, so we are still working on assessing and getting all of our 2022 TMN Tuesdays put together. Um, I know we don't have February's out yet, but we'll have that out. Um, as soon as we have that one uh, confirmed. I did want to ask, um, because Michelle and I are trying to pull this from uh, within our agencies, within our networks of conservation communities, um, and we're trying to, again, present to, to you and your members the kind of highest conservation issue of the month, so to speak, or the highest need for training. Um, what would you want to see in 2022, or what are those advanced training topics that you see a gap in that your membership would like to hear, would need to hear um, in 2022. And feel free to drop those in the chat now, or as you come across those great speakers or those great training topics or those needs throughout the year, feel free to send those to Michelle and I as well. As those are coming in, I have one question I wanna ask um, Gloria P. Lori, I'm sorry, I don't know what your last name is. Um, but you said you're, you, uh, you talked about in the chat that you're starting your in starting in person with some in-person meetings or trainings in February. 
and that masks are required? Um, is that because your local community is requiring masks or your, your county is requiring masks? Uh, the, the, my last, my last name is Periscava, Maria Periscava, but that's just because the, uh, where we're doing it is at the Lubbock Lake Landmark and they do require masks there. So we're trying to keep with that. Good. Great. Um, so our 2022 TMN Tuesday schedule is out. We do have these dates confirmed. Um, and so we will host these events on the second Tuesday of each month. They will be within that one hour range. Again, if there's a, um, a high need topic that needs more than an hour, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, they will be both uh, live and recorded uh, and available on the website immediately afterwards. Um, and then again, that purposefully done, um, although aggravating for the planner and me, um, kind of flowing plan for speaker topics um, is, is intentional. Great, and I love the, the topics that y'all are dropping in. Thank you for doing that. While we're talking about TMN Tuesdays, Michelle and I have had a couple of questions come in from your membership and we have a TMN Tuesday FAQ page. Um, it is on the website. I'll drop the link here in the chat in just a second. So I wanted to go over these just so that y'all have this information um, in a clear way so that um, you can help to answer some of these questions from your members before they email Michelle or I. Um, because again, they should, they should be able to filter some of that information through um, their chapter leadership. Um, our 2021 TMN Tuesday is available for 2022 AT hours. No, again, that's the calendar year um, in which those TMN Tuesday events occur is the calendar year in which they can um, watch them and count them for. Do I have to be a master naturalist to attend? Absolutely not. Please share these. These are public events. Um, these can be used as great recruiting tools. These can be used as great partnership events to share with your local um, nature clubs, programs, anybody who might have that interest in that specific month's topic as well. So please encourage that um, public audience with us. Um, and we do, uh, in some cases, when the technology gods like us, we do try and live stream them on uh, our Facebook page as well. Um, it just depends on what kind of mood the gods are in that month. Um, will TMN Tuesday events be recorded? Yes, we record them every single time um, and we post that to our website, uh, usually by the end of the day, if not the following day. Do I need to register for them each month? Yes, this is part of our security uh, protocol for the TMN Tuesdays because they are a live access event. We do have a new link every single month for the TMN Tuesdays, and you do have to register each month for that next month for that TMN Tuesday event. So that's part of our um, WebEx security protocols is that you will have to um, use that WebEx link each month to register again. How long after I watch a TMN Tuesday video can I log my AT hours? So in order to say, and Michelle, you can answer this one clearer uh, as you've got the VMS lingo down. If you wanted to. Yeah, so uh, all of our TMN Tuesdays for the year are available for you to watch within the year. Mm -hmm. um, and so you would need to report it within um, 45 days of having watched that uh, as a TMN Tuesday. So our TMN Tuesdays are available, are really the, the only um, advanced training events from the state office in the annual meeting. Um, that you can watch as a video without live um, speaker Q&A afterwards um, in another um, session. So uh, everything that is on our website for the year is watchable um, for that year. Uh, so everything from 2021 should have been watched in 2021. Um, and then reported within the 45 day uh, time period uh, of watching it. Um, our, what was available in 2021 will not go away. Um, we just can't count it for advanced training if you watched it in 2022. Um, the information that was presented is still good information. Um, it should a master naturalist want it and have not seen it yet. Um, so we are keeping them there. Thank you. And then Carla had a great comment in the chat too. So um, what I, 
while the, the links don't come out until we have the topic selected and finalized with the speaker, the WebEx links for registration don't come out, have your members go ahead and put these dates for the, for the TMN Tuesdays on their calendar. These are going to happen on these dates at this time. Um, we may not have the WebEx link out until we are, my goal is at least two weeks out. Sometimes it might be a week out. Um, and that would be kind of the minimum at, like length beforehand. Um, so so uh, while there may be some questions about is the website working, why don't they have the WebEx link out? We, we don't want to get that out um, without having the speaker finally confirmed, but these dates and these times are confirmed because we have to link the WebEx to that speaker on the back end. It's a good question, Carla, thank you. So again, TMN Tuesday topics, what do you want to hear? Ask your members and help filter some of those responses back up to us. Um, if you, at your next chapter meeting, ask them what they want to hear at these TMN Tuesdays and then send us a kind of concise summary of some of that. What training topics does your membership need more AT provided on? Um, and then also don't forget chapter management and leadership presentation topics as well. Okay. I'm going to keep going, Michelle, until you tell me to stop um, because I am watching the time and it's already 1230. So our spring 2020 training press release did go out. Cameron sent this out a few weeks ago. If you missed it because of the holiday um, hubbub, please let us know and we can get you added to our spring training list that's on our website. Currently, I show 20 chapters with spring trainings happening this year. Um, so that's great. Um, I know that there was a question in the chat earlier about how you're planning on hosting a spring training, whether it be in person, virtual or hybrid, and how you're utilizing your presenters. Um, I know I personally got to present at a chapter basic training on Saturday. It was, an, it was a hybrid training and it was a great example of a way that the chapter was staying flexible. Um, even for me as a presenter, I was not sure if I was going to be able to present either virtually or in person um, up until the last day. And, and big shout out to the Gideon Lincecum chapter. They um, were, were staying flexible with me. So it was, it was a great example of um, just kind of adapting as, as the times are staying adaptive. So this is, a, oh, nope, that formatting did not stay. Um, so this is half of the list because the other half is not there. Um, of the 20 chapters. But again, that is on our website. Um, if you use that link, Michelle, will you grab that link um, for the spring training off the website? Um, so I'll take that off. But that spring uh, 2020 basic training class is starting soon. Link there has all of those uh, chapters that we know about that are having spring trainings. If you are missing, please don't freak out. Please email Cameron or myself and we'll get you added ASAP. Okay, so I apologize about the formatting there. And then our diversity inclusion um, initiative, we have some workshop planning that we are working on. Um, we've talked about this uh, a while now. The idea behind the Be the Change mini series that we hosted in 2021 was to come to a culmination with a workshop in the spring of 2022. Um, we are looking within that first week or so of April. We don't have a final date. We've got a keynote speaker that we're looking to nail down and working to uh, manage with his schedule as well. Um, it will be a virtual workshop. Um, that virtual workshop, we're looking at uh, a couple of hours at least. Um, and so we're still soliciting uh, additional speakers and topics. If you have um, additional speakers and topics in mind for that workshop, please send them our way. Um, one of the things that's also helping, would help us to plan this workshop event is the uh, Google form that we sent out Michelle has that link if you'll drop that in the chat as well. We did send this out last week, I think, um, and it might have gotten missed in the, I think I sent like three emails in a row to y'all, so I apologize about that. Uh, but if you'll... Hmm? It was sent on the 11th. Oh, okay. Um, if you'll help us and answer that by February 15th so we can pull that uh, survey data and, um, and help to, that'll help us put together the workshop in April. Anything else on that one, Michelle? Okay. Um, again, that be the change. This was our uh, our run in 2021. Um, if there are other topics or speakers that you think need to be invited back for the 2022 workshop, um, please share that with us. We are um, all ears. 
Okay. Um, as Michelle and I were going through today's presentation, we started looking at all the dates and things that we have on our calendar, and we both went, oh, April is quite busy. Um, so we wanted to just make you aware that we know that April is about to be a very busy month for everybody. And if you aren't aware of some of these kind of national events or recognition weeks that are happening, um, we just wanted to put this on your radar as we started to look at how colorful our month looked for April. April is National Volunteer Recognition Month. Um, specifically, the third week in April, and the 17th through the 23rd is National Volunteer Week. And we uh, try to recognize and highlight volunteer accomplishments um, on a statewide level. And we encourage you to find uh, opportunities to recognize your volunteers on a local level as well that week or that whole month, make it a thing. Um, and Earth Day is conveniently right in the middle of that. So it's perfect for us. Um, it's a great way to, to recognize your members who have stuck through the last two years um, and the impacts that they've made. And then following that week is, um, is a huge week for Master Naturalists with the City Nature Challenge um, that happens April 29th through May 2nd with that ID period that happens the following week after that. Um, so again, just a, a lot's happening within that short time period. Speaking of a lot happening, and then May happens, uh, our virtual volunteer fair 2022, we heard, uh, we asked a few months ago uh, to the chapter presidents, do you want us to do another one of these? And the uh, answer was very clearly yes, uh, our members are asking for another one of these virtual volunteer fairs. So we um, pulled all of our dates together and we have a final date of May 4th and May 5th. Um, May 4th is Star Wars Day, if anybody's Star Wars fans. Um, but May 4th and May 5th are our planned dates for our virtual volunteer fair. I will be putting that call for proposals out to our chapter project uh, hosts here shortly. Uh, our ask of you as chapter presidents is to help share that project request to your local and state organization partners. So sending it to your local nature center, Audubon group, Parks and Wildlife Department, um, different organizations that you know are looking for volunteers on a larger scale than just their local communities, looking for virtual or distance volunteers to do social media and websites and um, dif distance educational programs as well. And the idea there is that you um, and your members ask for things that you could work on during the heat of the summer. Um, and so that's, that's the time frame of projects that we'd be looking for. Um, that organizations submit is something that you can be working on. Um, members can be working on from their home, the air conditioning of their own home um, through like June, July, August, and September. Um, and Michelle, we picked two holidays back to back. I didn't even think about it. We have Star Wars Day and then we have Cinco de Mayo. Um, <laughs> so it'll, we'll have to theme out the virtual we'll volunteer have fair. <laughs> I have we'll color have schemes already going. <laughs> I'll wear my sombrero. Okay. So that's our date for a virtual volunteer fair. That is not on our website yet. I'll get that on the website here in the next week or so. Um, our other date that we want you to put on for 2022 calendar check is our um, annual meeting, October 20th through the 23rd at the Omni Houston. We're going to be in smack dab in downtown Houston. We're really excited to actually right on Buffalo Bayou. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities that are already popping up um, uh, field sessions and speakers. Um, so a lot of information is about to start coming out about that as we finish putting some of that together on our side. Um, for now, what we're asking is that you um, share these dates with your members, encourage your new members to attend. We don't have a final format of virtual hybrid in person and what kind of percentages that all is going to look like yet. At least get them to save the date for us. Also, as you, your training directors are starting to line out your fall schedule, please try and avoid this weekend with your training class schedules so that your members have the opportunity to attend, especially your in-training members. Um, all of them are welcome. And that's, that's a question we often get. Can trainees attend the, attend the annual meeting? And absolutely, um, they can get all of their advanced training requirements in in one weekend and typically um, when we see trainees um, attend the annual meeting, that hooks them in um, as a leader in your chapter too. So it starts with that excitement early. Great. 
Okay, um, and then we're going to run into other chapter resources. These are things that Michelle and I have offered from the state office and we just want to um, cover again, especially as we have a lot of new chapter presidents on the line with us. So we've had the regional WebEx accounts for the past um, year, year and a half or a little more. We will be keeping those again this year. Um, and you can see on the kind of left hand or right, right hand side of the screen there, um, we have several chapters within a region that share an account. Um, so the one thing that we ask when your chapters, just a reminder, and especially those presidents who are new um, to kind of the WebEx and regional WebEx accounts, uh, when you log in or you're as a chapter within the region, you log into your account, uh, that WebEx account, the first thing you need to do is look at the calendar and um, not try, uh, Try not, we cannot uh, schedule meetings on top of each other. So the same time, same day can't happen. Um, somebody will get kicked off if that happens. So the first thing to do is uh, log in, look at the calendar, see what is already planned there. Um, we are asking that you set up your, um, the name of your meeting a certain way. Um, so include your chapter, what it is, whether it's a, a new chapter, a training session, and then who is the person that um, needs to be, who is the person kind of in charge of that for your chapter that should there be any questions, we can contact you and get in touch with. Um, all that needs to be in the title. Um, the recordings that you can record on the, the WebEx accounts. Um, I go in there on the first of the month and delete um, whatever is a month old um, on there. So uh, be sure that if you want to keep the recording, you download your recording um, of whatever your meeting was or your recording was to a local computer for your chapter. Um, and that I, I do have to go in and download, I, I do have to go in and delete those every month. Um, anything that's a month older, I do not save them anywhere. So. Um, the only thing with the WebEx account is that uh, we do run out of storage, uh, it, or we can run out of storage, and that's why we need to keep it clean. Um, Michelle, will you answer two questions that came in chat? One is about uh, if they're interested in joining the web or using their regional WebEx and they're new here, how do they get access? And then the other is <clears throat> why did we end up with WebEx versus other platforms? Yeah, um, so if you don't know how to log into WebEx yet, um, you can, did we include that in the slide? We did not. No, okay. Um, we let, send me a note after this meeting and I will um, give you the information for your region, um, login and, and password information. Um, we just won't broadcast that here today and in a recording. Um, and then, um, the other question was, why did we uh, go with WebEx? Um, WebEx ha is um, more secure um, and safe. Uh, at the time that we acquired it, it was the most secure and safe um, item that we had available to us. And so um, that is what we're using. Thank you. Okay. Um, some other technical resources that we have available is Slack. Um, uh, if you're unfamiliar with Slack, it is a um, communication platform that is similar to a website, uh, website discussion forum that um, was brought forward to us by the Coastal Prairie chapter. They use it very actively. Um, it is where all of their communication happens for um, all of their projects and their, their members and, and things that need to happen within that chapter. It lessens the amount of email flow and puts everything in a very kind of organized fashion. Um, we are going to be sending out for all uh, 2022 chapter presidents, we are gonna be sending out a Slack invitation. That'll come from um, either Bert or myself, I'm not sure, but if you see the word Slack, don't spam it. It is um, it's an invitation to this discussion forum. It is not, it is an unofficial and unmonitored communication portal, but it is a resource tool that chapters have found useful in the past for um, file sharing, for commentary, questions like, who, did, who does your chapter use to teach this unit because we can't find a speaker? Or 
um, how have you tackled this issue as a, uh, as a chapter? Again, unofficial and unmonitored, Michelle and I watch it, but are not able to officially monitor it. Um, so, so just kind of keep that in mind as you're using that as a resource. And we'll send that invitation out within the week or so. Um, There's a question in the chat about Slack and Nancy asks, is it possible to communicate with other chapter presidents using Slack and yes, if they're on Slack, it's possible to communicate with them. The um, thing to note there is that is a, it is an unofficial and unmonitored communication portal. Um, so some of what is presented there may not always um, match what our guidelines and regulations and policies um, say for the program. Yeah, and there's different channels. So you can talk as a channel amongst presidents and that's what we'll invite you all to. All right, so staying on the tech uh, resources, our WordPress website, um, uh, fear not, we have hired a, our Agilife has hired a website support specialist. They just started uh, last week. And so we are getting that person onboarded with the master uh, volunteer programs within Agrilife that they'll serve both master gardeners, master naturalists, and a few of the other uh, volunteer programs within Agrilife. So they are not solely master naturalists, but they are going to have a dedicated slot for us. Um, and they will uh, pick up the monthly trainings again on WordPress. We'll pick up uh, answering all the first call tickets on uh, master, naturalist Word, uh, master naturalist WordPress questions. Um, as a reminder, we do have trainings and recordings of uh, past done WebEx, or not WebEx, WordPress, there's too many Ws, WordPress trainings, um, and those are also on our website. If you'll just search on our website for WordPress, you can find those, and I'll try and drop that link here in just a second. Um, while we're talking about tech benefits, there are some tech issues. Um, we heard through 2021 a couple of different scams that were being um, done, and we just wanted to make you aware of some of these phishing scams. Um, uh, some connected to the website, some connected to other forums that chapters are using for their communication methods. Um, we had director emails that were being sent saying, um, hey, Scott, I am asking you to send me some bank information about the North Texas chapter, or hey, I'm going to send you a gift card. Will you send me your bank account information for the North Texas chapter? And while they looked official and it looked like it was coming from a, a master naturalist member to a master naturalist member, they were out of sorts with their spelling and with their, um, their specific request. So um, if you will please let your members know before they answer questions in any sort of email that have to do with bank accounts or protected passwords um, for master naturalist uh, web or tech resources, um, sometimes the best way is just to call and just say, hey, Scott, did you mean to send me this or did this actually come from you? Um, I haven't heard from you in months and now you're asking me for money? Um, sorry, Scott, your picture's right in, in the line next to me. Um, so when in doubt, call the person, just check in. Um, these are phishing scams that are um, not uncommon uh, in today's uh, network. So uh, please, please check on that. Okay. Um, Michelle, I'm seeing some questions getting boosted in the, the chat. Is it possible to get a list of each chapter's president and a way to reach them? Um, we don't have that as a resource available right now. The best resource to get a hold of other chapter presidents is the Slack channel. Um, so we'll have all 2022 chapter presidents on that Slack or channel. Or their website. Uh, or their website, yeah. I know one, one question asked other than the website, but that, that's... Um through their website or the Slack channel is what's available right now, if that person participates in the Slack. Yep. Um, and one of the things that, that we've been asked through kind of our, our, our phishing issues that we've had before, and that's phishing with a PH, is how does your public audience contact your chapter for information? So we've seen um, some chapters will use the form, some chapters will um, have a email address that'll say president at chapter.com um, for their individual chapter offices or officers. Um, those two seem to be safer than a um, marypearl at gmail.com contact me and my email address is all over the website. Um, so I would avoid putting your personal email address on the website even uh, 
I just avoid putting personal web personal email addresses on the website and use either a, um, a an authorized form uh, or a um, kind of chapter relative email address. Great. Um, so just more things to be aware of in, in the age that we live in. Um, meeting Owls, more resource tools. So we did offer these Meeting Owls as a new hybrid tool um, that are in use. I don't know what the, this weekend there means. Um, we did loan these out to chapters. I think I was thinking of what I was gonna do with them. I don't know. Um, the Meeting Owls we have loaned out. So I had 11 in my inventory. We did loan them out to chapters. Um, the plan is to loan them out on half year basis. So first half of 2022 was mailed out uh, two weeks ago last week and then uh, we'll be mailed back in June, July, and then those will be mailed back out to chapters that have requested them for the second half. I have mailed out all of my owls, all 11 of them for the first half of 2022. Um, I am looking to see if I need to obtain more um, or other types of hybrid devices if the demand is there. Um, if you are interested, if you'll drop a link that you still need them, um, otherwise, we'll, we'll keep with the 11 that we have in stock and rotate them um, in the second half of 2022. Um, I will say I saw them in action. This is the this weekend part. I saw one in action. Again, a shout out to the Gideon Lincecum chapter. They invited me for an in-person meeting, uh, in-person training, and they put theirs on a tripod in the front of the room, and it was really well done. You can see they had about five or six people um, on virtual, and then they had another dozen or so that were in person, and it was a great mix of, uh, of that hybrid training style. Okay, and Michelle, we've got eight minutes, so I apologize about rushing through these last couple. Yeah, um, so just, I mentioned this in the, the beginning, um, kind of the recap of 2021. We did go through a um, update of our uh, chapter management operations protocol that we lovingly refer to as CMOP. Um, there's not a huge amount of uh, technical changes to the, the operations protocols. There is one um, change for um, the time period of trainings. Um, but other than that, the, the policies per se are the same as what they were. The, the document itself went through a uh, major reorganization, um, cleaning up of um, grammar and structure, um, but aside from that change to the, the training, the length of training and when training uh, starts, the, tra the time period starts for certification, um, what, what the operations protocol said before are pretty much the same now. They're just, it just looks different and re reorganized. Um, and then I mentioned that the uh, chapter operating handbook is the next item on our list. And then we're thinking about looking at bylaws. Excellent. Um, uh, Master Naturalist merchandise. So uh, we've covered this topic a few times and I've had this slide on here um, for the last couple of meetings, but I just wanted to run through it again and again. And I apologize that we're going fast over these last couple of things. Um, we have two types of Master Naturalist merchandise that live out there. There is official Master Naturalist state offered items that are developed by our state office. They are either sold in uh, bulk, they are sold on our state website, or they're offered through pop-up stores. Um, and we and they are, they have the approved logos, the trademarks, they follow all of our design things. They come from Michelle and myself, and those are our state offered items. We also have local chapters that are interested in uh, producing their own local chapter uh, master naturalist gear. If your chapter is moving in that direction to produce a master naturalist uh, shirt or um, item that says your specific chapter's uh, name on it, you must follow our marketing and brand ID guidelines that is on our website. Michelle and I have to fight um, very hard to protect our trademark on the master naturalist uh, dragonfly in our title. Um, so help us to do that by following the, that marketing and brand ID guidelines. Michelle, if you'll drop that, uh, it's on the chapter documents page um, towards the bottom, um, if you'll follow there. And then if you are going to use the dragonfly, please, um, you must get that approved by our state office. So I am 
wearing a Cradle of Texas 20th anniversary shirt that they um, hosted. They had this design approved, the colors approved by our state office, this logo um, use alongside their chapter name approved um, through the state office before they went into production. So it's better to do that before you um, uh, go into production. Um, we have some, some things that we're gonna try and change to streamline that process in 2022. So if you send us your artwork, it, it flows um, faster through our email inbox. And, and uh, I'm, we're still working on all of that and what that'll look like in 2022. And Kathy, this shirt looks fantastic. Um, the, so thinking about that first column on the left, the state merchandise, we have a couple of different categories under state um, offered merchandise. The first is that curriculum, um, the uh, Master Naturals curriculum. I've had a few tra new training directors email me. Um, this typically happens in January or folks are turning over. So please let your training directors know that our curriculum is not on our bookstore, but is a separate a and Press account. It's a separate a and Press website. They go to Texas A&M University Press. They order those. It is under the about slash curriculum page. All of the information the bulk order form to get that 50% off. If you go to our website, you will find all of that TAMU press information. Now for our state authorized shirts and hats and et cetera, we have two types of uh, offerings for the state authorized shirts, hats and whatever. We have the AgriLife bookstore, which is merchandise that's stocked in a warehouse. It is limited quantities and sizing, but it does ship right away. And it's like Amazon Prime on that three to five day turnaround window to get to your house. We also have in the past offered a drop ship or what we've called pop-up stores. And those are where we collect orders for about a month and then we close the order and we process that order and then we ship it. So you may not get your item for another for about two months after you order it, but you get that bulk discount and it's and we can change styles and things like that seasonally. Um, we don't have a drop ship planned for early 2022, it might be mid 2022 before we do one. Um, I actually just submitted a restock request for the bookstore today. So we're putting together a restocking um, that'll hopefully go live in February. And I'll let you guys know when all that those items go back into the, the bookstore. I keep calling it the bookstore. It's actually not the bookstore anymore. They call it AgriLife Learn. I'm never gonna stop calling it the bookstore um, because it's been that forever. But the AgriLife Learn page is where our merchandise or our hats, shirts, lanyards, patches live. Um, and that is where that restock order will go as well. Um, and then their customer service email is there as well. And I realize that I'm going fast and I apologize, but I wanna make sure that you guys get to see all of this stuff. Um, the last little bit of merchandise is our license plate. We do have our license plate out. It went out in uh, July of 2021. You can see on the bottom our, our quarterly uh, updates. We'll try to keep sharing these quarterly updates with you on sales so that you have an idea of how those license plates are starting to pop up around the state of Texas. Uh, we've had 388 sold so far, 316 in Q3 and 72 in Q4. Um, so it's great to get to see that. And we will always take a picture of your license plate and put it on here. If you send it to us, we will put it on our, uh, our presentation any chance we get. Um, I had somebody send me a, a license plate the other day. I also stalked somebody in the uh, grocery store parking lot that had a Master Naturalist license plate. Nancy, one of your members at Lost Pines, I saw her at HEB and I said, hey, I see it. It was exciting. All right. Okay, we've just got a few more slides. Michelle, this is your slide. Um, and then I think we've got two more after that. So thank you all for hanging on to that last couple of minutes here. Yes, so um, we have a new project coming up um, for master naturalists who are um, skilled and excellent photographers. Um, and this isn't a sign up today, but what I'd like to do is target those who have um, a, a skill and um, training in photography, um, your members. So if you have if you have members that fit kind of that description, if you could send me their email, um, send me their name and, and contact information, or you can drop their name in the chat here today 
Um, we are launching, we're working with um, our agency, um, Wildlife Diversity Program, to launch a, um, a photo safari of, of sorts. And what we're specifically looking for is um, shots, photos of um, natural areas, um, native landscape, um, uh, in, in cities. Um, and not only are we looking for kind of that natural landscape with the city juxtaposition, but also um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, people, um, people using the space, recreating in the space. Um, our agency typically has um, very limited um, photos in, with all of this in it. And so we'd like to um, ask um, master naturalists who are specifically skilled in this area um, because you're usually out um, in these areas and you see you're working on projects um, that you see these, these things happen or opportunities happen to take to snap these pictures. Um, and so our agency is working with our program to be able to um, have some of those pictures and um, kind of the, the what would, what the, it's, what's in it for the photographer is that they'll be credited with, it, with agency, um, whenever it's used within the agency and our program. So um, if you have someone in your chapter who you think that would be a good person for us to work with on this, um, please let me know. So Michelle, clarifying, you are not asking them to send you pictures right now. You are asking them to send you names of photographers, names, names and email addresses of those photographers. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. And we will, will, when, so I see the question in the chat about permission for photos, like when we sign people, like once we get the project uh, enough people and sign them up, there will be a training, there will be an orientation. We will cover the, the permissions um, the, in all of that. Great. Okay. So with a few minutes after the one o'clock hour, we have, um, our final two slides. Um, I would like to open up the president's round table, um, with any questions that we, that y'all might have in these last couple of minutes. Um, before I do that, uh, this is a little out of order, but we do have our calendar check on here. We have chapters that are um, celebrating 2022 anniversaries this year. So uh, share with us your celebration plans. This did cut off our February date for um, the TMN Tuesdays and the chapter president's meeting that's coming up in February. So with that, if there are uh, any questions that you'll wanna open up on the floor, if you'll drop those into the chat, we can get that discussion started, otherwise, um, we will call this chapter president's meeting and appreciate y'all's time today. Good, Michelle, Margaret has a question for you. Um, are we as TMNs allowed to speak to city officials about environmentally friendly building practices and new housing developments? I mean, as, as an individual, you can talk with them. Um, I don't. Uh, I guess I'd need more information on uh, what, uh, when you ask, allowed to speak to city officials about that. Um, as an individual, you certainly can. Um, I, it, and then, um, I don't know if you'd be like going, I don't know if your request is like, you'd be going before a city board, an organization, you've been asked to participate on a committee, um, there's a lot of if then <laughs> in that question. Yeah. Um, there's some other questions that are coming in. So I'm gonna move through a few more of these. Um, there's a question from Cassie on, for those that had retreats, what worked and what didn't work for you? Um, if there's somebody in, uh, in the room that had a great retreat experience, um, would you like to share that, unmute and share that? or you can text chat it. We do want this to be the discussion round tables part. Or you can chat that if you'd like to. Um, there's another question about, go ahead, Michelle. 
Oh, I, there's um, the state meeting um, recordings again. I guess the, if are you able to go back to that slide? Yeah, um, I, I know less about Google Slides than I know. Uh, here it is. The uh, and then someone asked about this year's pin. It'll be available for order um, in February. The 2021 annual meeting um, recording can be watched through April 2022 for AT hours. There, uh, the website is going through a transition right now. So we are trying to pull those recordings off of the CVENTS annual meeting website and we'll have those available to, we'll make those available to all those who registered for the 2021 annual meeting um, to be able to continue to count those as an AT hours until April of 2022. Okay, looks like QuickBooks is a uh, pretty popular platform. It's great. Thank you guys for resource sharing. And again, this is something that y'all can do on the Slack channel as well um, and resource share. Or if there are questions that you want submitted to the, um, to the discussion forum, uh, to the discussion round table ahead of time. Yeah, and next, like for our next meeting, if you have questions that you want to ask of other presidents, um, this is a great place to do that. Um, we had a lot to go over with you today because of it's the, the first meeting of the new year. So there was a lot of reminders and just um, things that um, have been happening over the course of several years that we wanted to um, let you know about and just kind of get that on your radar um, with this meeting. So with the February meeting, we hope to have more time to be able to have more kind of roundtable questions like this. So um, I think this is the best place to ask those questions. Um, so send us the, uh, your questions that come up over the month and we can um, add a slide in to, as a prompt um, in the next meeting. So Michelle, I'm gonna put you on the spot and ask you a question that got asked in the chat. Terry Hurley says, we always have a couple of trainees so they're new class trainees that do not finish their advanced training and their volunteer service requirements within the usual or the required advanced uh, basic training timeline for new trainees. They're asking for extensions. Does the state have any guidelines on this? So our policy is and really always has been, um, what if they haven't completed um, in within kind of that time frame, they're still a member in training. Um, and they, they, their year would start over. Um, they don't have to do training over, but they're like, their their year almost kind of starts over, um, for 40 hours of training and service. Do you want to expand on that and give an example, Michelle? So the calendar year, uh, guidelines for the CMOP says if they are starting Say they start a new training class on January 15th and they have until the following January 15th to complete their initial 48 and 40. They complete their basic training 40, they get that, but they don't get their eight and 40 for that first year. Do they have until the following January 15th to get that initial 40 or is it, is it do those, does that 40 and eight so, start again? Um, I think like, I'm having a hard time um, visualizing that and answering on the spot. So we mapped this out in a um, in a uh, presentation that we did and in a previous president mm -hmm. meeting last year. So we can revisit that this year um, and pull that up in the next meeting so that like we're all on the same page about everything. And then um, in between today, and getting our notes out, we can pull that up and get that information out to you, to the, yep. to as no, in the notes. I think that was at the new training class directors meeting last summer. Um, I think I remember that being on one of our slides, and we'll put that together and send yeah. that out to all when chapter we can presidents. Every all the presidents about about the change to the CMOP. Um, yeah, that's when we developed it. Okay, so that's something that we'll owe you guys, and we'll get that out. Um, within the next week or so, a uh, couple weeks, so that we can answer that question uh, with visuals and better information. Okay, um, I'm seeing the last couple of questions, but again, the, the meeting is concluded. I'm gonna stop the recording. 
Um, and if you need to go, go ahead and go. And Michelle and I will stick around. I know she's got a, a hard stop here in the next couple of minutes. So thank you guys for coming. We appreciate it.